Let's go back to one second to this case. What if we just take a neutral wire and we move it with, that, with no current? I just take the wire from here and move it to here. Well, in this case, because I'm moving the wire, I'm moving both the positive charges and the negative charges. So this is the case where those two movements cancel each other out. This is the case where the two movements cancel each other out, and that's why there's zero magnetic field. Of course, this comes up much more often on problems. Um, than this, but this, is, this would be a good test question to ask. What, um, so oftentimes a good test question is just, if, if magnetic fields come from moving charges, why can't you create a magnetic field just by waving a wire around? Um, in fact, of course, we know that you can't do that, right? If you just took a wire um, off the shelf and started waving it around, it wouldn't suddenly become a magnet. It wouldn't start, suddenly start uh, attracting your refrigerator magnets. And the reason is that you can't move the wire around. When you're moving the wire around, you can't just move one type of charge. You're moving both the positive and the negative charges together, so there's no net moving charge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, to summarize, if you want to know if there's an electric field, you have to focus on all the charges and see whether they cancel each other out. Okay. But when you want to know whether there's a magnetic field, you should only focus on the moving charges and see whether they cancel each other out. And again, for all practical purposes, we always imagine that a current involves the movement of positive charges, and the negative charges would not be moving. Okay, well these would be good examples um, to have in your notes. These are the main possible um, cases that could come up. And there's a, good, there's a good chance that you can see a problem like this that gives you a situation and asks, will there be an electric field and will there be a magnetic field? Students oftentimes have, have difficulty with that because it, it's not that easy. Yeah. Especially because students get the idea of electric and magnetic fields confused in their mind. Take ten. Okay, good. All right, so we have to go back and try to apply that to this problem. Are there any electrical forces on this electron? Um, well, the first thing we have to ask is, is there going to be an electrical field at this point? Well, will there be an electrical field here? That's a good answer. That's right. The electron has a net charge, but it can't exert a force on itself. We want to know whether there's a force from the wires. We were just talking about how these wires are neutral. There's no reason not to think the wires are neutral, so they're not going to create um, any electric field. Okay. If the wires weren't neutral, how would they, how would they state that in the problem? They could say um, wire one has a net positive charge of plus Q, uh, positive Q, okay. for example. Um, that would be pretty unusual to have a charged yeah. wire. Usually we have, say, a charged point or a charged sphere. Um, but if, they, but uh, if it, uh, a, a normal wire in a circuit is going to be neutral overall. But uh, if they, so we wouldn't think otherwise unless there was a very strong indication of the problem. Okay. Uh, all right, well then they also asked us, are there any magnetic forces on the electron? Well, the first thing we have to do is figure out, is there a magnetic field being created by these wires? Well, will the wires create a magnetic field? For example, will yeah. wire one create a magnetic field? Yeah. Yes, and they said, if so, why? So how would you explain why you know it's creating a magnetic field? Because even though there's no net charge, the wire is creating current, so there's a net moving charge. Yeah, it does have a net moving charge because it has a current. Okay, and on the test, um, you could probably just boil it down and say um, because it would create a magnetic field because it's a current carrying wire. We know that current carrying wires create magnetic fields. Um, you, don't even probably have, you probably don't even have to get into the whole business of how the positive charges are moving and the negative charges aren't. I was just bringing that up to distinguish it between this case over here. So we know that this will create a magnetic field, but then you'd have to go on. Then you'd have to say that you also know that I2 is going to create a magnetic field, and then you would have to go on to say that those are not going to cancel each other out because they're in the same direction. So you'd have to show um, not just that they're creating magnetic fields, but that they won't cancel each other out. But we already figured out that both of the magnetic fields in this case from both wires would be into the page. So overall, we know the magnetic field here is going to be into the page. But what we're still not done because the question is, was there a magnetic force on the electron? Not is there um, a... Uh, magnetic field, 
Um, so how do we know there's a magnetic force on this electron? What is it? What are the requirements for having a magnetic force? Um, I mean, the magnetic field is what causes there to be a force, right? That's true. However, we saw last time that even when there is a magnetic field, you might still not have a magnetic force. There's a bunch of other requirements that we need. Uh, well, do you remember what's the formula for calculating magnetic force? Um, I mean, I don't remember it, but I... Oh, you can go ahead and look it up. Okay. Force equals Q naught. We talked about how this is just the formula for figuring out magnitude. So I'll put dots on top of everything, just as a reminder that these would only be magnitudes. What does this tell us? It tells us that it's not enough to have a magnetic field in order to have a magnetic force. You have, some, you have to have some other things. First of all, you have to have a net test charge. For example, if this was a neutron, it wouldn't feel a magnetic force. So uh, for a full credit answer here, we should also state this will feel a force because it's charged. A neutron wouldn't feel a force. And it has to be moving. Well, so we, in a full credit answer, we should say it's moving, and it has to have a component of its motion that's perpendicular to the, for, to the field. Well, does this have a component that's perpendicular to the field? Um, yes. Yeah. All right, so for a full credit answer, to explain why there's a magnetic force, you have to show that there's a magnetic field, and that there's a charge, and that, it's move, that the test charge is moving, and it has a, per, a component that's perpendicular to the field. Okay, so there's a lot of things that have to go right before we can have a magnetic force. All right, so now it looks like we're ready for uh, part B. So uh, take a look at that and describe to me how you would go about answering that. Okay, so we could start by finding the magnitude. Yeah. Right. Um, and the charge in the electron, so you know, it's negative. Um, and they give another Maybe you can tell if the velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field, and it's like to the right. Um, so, so I mean, I guess basically Liam is helping to say that it's um, Q times V times V, and then just find the direction. And so we know that if we, in this case, we point the point my fingertips. Well. So to find Q not V, um, I think because it's a negative electron, it's in the opposite direction. Good. Now, I think if you're thinking about this well, let's just write down what would be V perpendicular here? Um, v. Yeah. As you already uh, pretty much mentioned, the entire V is already perpendicular to V. So we can also say that this is V perpendicular, and now you're figuring out what QV perpendicular would be, and I think you saw seen that would be in the opposite direction because we're dealing with a negative charge. So QV perpendicular would be to the left. Okay, so let's go ahead and work that out. Okay, um, so my fingertips are pointing in the direction of QV, or negative QV, I guess, and then my palm is facing into the board. Oh wait, no, yeah, my palm is facing because the magnetic field is pointing into the board. Uh -huh. And my thumb points down, so the force is down. Good. Okay, so I guess my main confusion with this problem was I didn't know what was producing the force on the magnetic field and, and all of those things. Because right. I, was, I was confused about whether I was supposed to be determining the force based on the, the currents on the wires or if it was based on the electron. So, um, okay. Yeah, so, so, yeah. So, now at this point, we've only answered part of the problem mm -hmm. because we've only figured out the direction of the force. And the question was asking us for the magnitude. So let's see where we're at here. One thing we should do is they told us specifically here to use their axes. Um, so we, uh, instead of saying that, the, so what, what should we say is the direction of the force? Instead of saying that the direction of the force is down. It's in the negative y direction. Yeah, we should say that this is in the 
negative y direction because they, in this picture, down, down in this picture is in the negative y direction. They also gave us a side view here um, of these two wires, uh, which is a little confusing for some people to try to combine these together in their heads. But fortunately, we don't really need to think about this side view because we can tell just from this picture right here that the force is going to be in the negative y direction. So we don't even have to match this up with this over here.